ahead and get started. Uh, a couple of things. Number one, um, when you go to your uh, Canvas site and then launch yourself into your Hawk system, uh, I did push back. You had your quiz number eight due this weekend, of course. But yeah, I pushed back section uh, 5.1 until uh, Wednesday just to give you guys a little extra time because you just, just had a test and I'm kind of pushing back a little things just to give you guys a little more time to get things done. So 5.1 I think is due on Wednesday. And then this coming up weekend, you're going to have uh, quiz number uh, 9. Uh, they'll be due on Saturday. And you're going to have also your lesson homework from section 5.2 and 5.3. And today we're actually starting into 5.3, really getting into it and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Section 5.3 is on the derivative of logs. And section 5.4 is on the derivative of exponential functions. We've got log functions and exponential functions. So here's the deal. Just remind yourself. The rule. First off, we're talking about taking derivative of, uh, of the log. I introduced this last time, but didn't get much to it. So you got there's two rules you have to focus on. Now, the first rule is just basic rule of taking the derivative of the log, and that is this: if you got y equals the natural log of x, then y prime is equal to one over x. Your derivative of natural log of x is one over x. Okay. But continuing on with that. For every rule we give you from this point out, there's the rule, and then there's a chain rule version of that rule. So instead of just having a plain old x, if you've got y equals the natural log of a function we're calling g of x, then y prime is going to be that 1 over g of x, and that's really the trick on the natural log. You get that 1 over aspect to it. It's 1 over g of x times g prime of x. And some teachers would go ahead and write this as g prime of x over g of x, and that's absolutely fine. But when I want you to memorize this stuff, memorizing the rule, the derivative of natural log of a function is that 1 over. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of natural log of a function is 1 over the function chain rule times the derivative of the inside. So this is the chain rule version of that. But also do not forget. John's fundamental rule of calculus. John's fundamental rule of calculus is very simple. It says better to clean up your algebra before your calculus than afterwards. You've got three major log properties that are going to help you clean this stuff up because they're going to give you natural log of really large, nasty stuff. So remember your log properties. The log properties designed to help you clean this stuff up are these. These are the big three. Number one. The natural log of m times n. If you've got two things being multiplied under basic log properties from way back when, when you first introduced logs in high school, multiplication turns into what? Addition. This is the natural log of m plus the natural log of n. Number two, if you've got the natural log of m divided by n, according to your log properties, that's going to be equal to the natural log of m minus the natural log of n. Very simply, multiplication turns into addition, division turns into subtraction, and your third big log property is the natural log of some number raised to a constant, or some function raised to a constant. Natural log of something raised to a power. Powers get to go where? Out front. That's C, natural log of N. Okay? Now, in terms of log properties, so if you've got this big multiplication division and you've got the log in front of this guy, you can use those log properties and bust him up into little bitty logs, and it's going to be so much easier to take the derivative of these little bitty logs because constants hold over. The derivative of natural log of, a fun of x is 1 over x. The derivative of natural log of function is 1 over function under the function. These properties are going to help you out immensely. Now that's the big idea behind section 5.3, and we'll get some examples in just a second. But since I'm talking about it, I want to go over it. In section 5.4, we're going to be focusing on the derivative of the exponential function. The exponential function, we're focusing on natural logs and e's that the log that a natural log is based upon. So with uh, 
this, again, you've got two rules. These are your rules for derivatives. Your first rule is if y equals e to the x, this is the easiest function to take the derivative of because it's its own derivative. Derivative e to the x is e to the x. This is why it shows up in nature naturally. So when you're analyzing a bunch of stuff in science, when you sit there and look at things that grow at a rate proportional to itself, it has this e to the x look to them. It's an exponential model. So you typically see a lot of this stuff in science. And therefore, when you start talking about banking and how things grow, like interest rates and your interest on your accounts and stuff like that, they're going to grow in the same type of way. And therefore, you're going to see a lot of E in the business world. So the derivative of E to the X is E to the X. That's the, there's only one function other than E to the X that's its, its own derivative, and that is zero. The derivative of zero is zero. That's not real exciting here. But the derivative of E to the X is E to the X. So the second rule is the chain rule version of it. So instead of y equals e to the x, you've got y equals e to a function. We'll call him f of x for that matter. Then the derivative is going to be, well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of e to a function is going to be the same thing, e to the function. But then you've got to do times the derivative of the exponent. The exponent is, quote, unquote, the inside. So this is the chain rule version of it. So for every rule we give you guys, there's the basic rule and then the chain rule version of it. Here's the basic rule. And then the chain rule version of it. You've got to remember those two things. So this is what we're doing today, 5.3 and 5.4. Let's take a look at some of our notes and stuff. So this is our from our section 5.3. And from 5.3, again, just talk about the uh, idea of the taking the derivative of logs. We go over here to our learn mode and, and basically focus on the basic rules. If f of x is equal to natural log of x, then f prime of x is equal to what? 1 over x, basic rule. And again, if you've got y equals the natural log of a function g of x, then y prime equals 1 over g of x times g prime of x. But that's also equal to g prime of x over g of x if you wanted to clean them up. Taking the log of both sides of an equation and then differentiating as a special rule, we'll get into that. That's called logarithmic differentiation. Okay. So, for example, take a look at this problem right here. And this is from our uh, www.hawkstv.com. So they got an example similar to this. And here it is. They want you to take a root of this guy. It is y equals 18 times the square root of, the, of x times the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared. Okay? First things first. Clean them up. This is y equals 18. I don't do square roots. I do x to the 1 half times the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared. What's going on here is your functions are going to get even harder with these exponentials and logs chunked into it. But the big deal is very simply, just like we did at the beginning. Look at this problem, stop, pause, hesitate, and ask yourself, what's the big picture? And if you don't know, read the problem, you can figure it out. Y equals 18 times x to the negative, excuse me, y, y equals 18x to the one half times the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared. That big times in the middle tells me what's the rule I'm going to use? Product rule. Do the first times second plus the first times do the second. So labeling is everything in calculus. So you can call them dy over dx if you like to, or y prime, your choice, is equal to product rule. The derivative of the first. This is my first guy. The natural log term is my second term. That's second guy. So the derivative of the first. The derivative of 18x to the 1 half. A half of 18 is 9x, subtract 1, to the negative 1 half. The derivative of the first times the second. The squeak copy it, natural log of 5 minus 11x squared, plus the first, 18x to the 1 half, times the derivative of the second. Now, the second guy is the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, but we don't just have an x here, we got natural log of a function, so we've got to use the chain rule version of it. The derivative of natural log of a function is 1 over the function, 5 minus 11x squared 
times the derivative of the inside. The inside is that 5 minus 11x squared. Derivative of 5 is 0. Derivative of minus 11x squared would be 2 times negative 11, which would be negative 22x. Does that make sense? Now, if I was going to clean this guy up, I would do this. So your y prime would be equal to... And there's not much more you can do to clean this thing up except maybe multiply some constants together or something like that. So I would get something like this. This is 9. Uh, negative exponent goes where? On the bottom. So it would be 9 times the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared divided by a negative exponent goes on the bottom. A half a power is the square root. So if I give it a multiple choice answer, you can make it look like this. On uh, Hawks, you can type in exactly the way it looks. Just be careful about parentheses around numerator, parentheses around denominator. This guy here, I'm going to multiply my constants. Eight, positive 18 times a negative 22. 18 times 22 is 396, and that would be a minus 396. X to the one-half power is the square root of X times that other X. You can leave them like that. Over 5 minus 11X squared. And if you really wanted to, you could also clean that up or clean it up in this sense. And you end up getting also, either way, y prime equals 9 times the natural log of 5 minus 11x squared over the square root of x minus 396. What's x to the 1 half times x? When you multiply, what do you do with the exponents? You add them. Well, that's 1 plus a half is 1 and a half, or x to the 3 halves, that's also acceptable, divided by 5 minus 11x squared. There's the cleaned up version of my answer right there. But if you're typing this in on web work, you can type it in just like this, or if you can type one two, you can type it in just like this. Either way, in terms of your Hulk system, Hulk system will actually take it either way. Your, your computer system will take it either way you want to. No worries at all. Okay? Just be careful on the parentheses. The real kicker on this thing is actually typing this thing on the computer. We know that's when we give you multiple attempts on this thing. All right. Take a look at these guys. These problems here say, quote, take the derivative of each of the following expressions. All right. Now, I'm going to teach you guys the trick right from the get-go. Before you even take the derivative of these problems, Clean them up first. All right, so here's the rule. Look first. F of x equals 17x squared plus the natural log of x cubed. Before I even take a derivative, this is not a derivative, this is clean up. F of x is equal to 17x squared. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. Plus, how would you clean up the natural log of x cubed? What's the rules about logarithms? When you're taking the natural log of something to a power, where do the powers get to go? In front of the log. First thing they're trying to teach you guys is clean it up. So natural log of x cubed, same thing as 3 natural log of x. Does that make sense? Now take the derivative. Clean them up first, and then take the derivative. Derivative of 17x squared, well, 2 times 17 is uh, 34x, plus 3 is a constant, it holds over, times, what's derivative of natural log of x? Pure, pure memorization of rules. What's derivative of natural log of x? What is it? 1 over x. Rules you're supposed to have memorized. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of natural log of function, 1 over the function times derivative of the function. That's what we're focusing on. So if you wanted to clean this up, this answer would be 34x plus 3 divided by x. Because you 3 times 1, you multiply your constants in the numerator and you get 3 over x. Does that make sense? Take a look at the next guy. Y equals 21x squared times the natural log of x to the fourth. And you're right, it's going to be a product rule here, but first, clean them up. So, this is still y. 21x squared is no problem, but what, how do you clean up that natural log of x to the fourth? Again, when it comes to natural log of something to a power, according to my log properties, where the powers get to go? In front, and I'm just going to stick them out in front, that would be 4 times the natural log of the x. The power gets to go in front. Now, of course, you want to clean that up. So y equals well, 4 times 21 is 84 x squared times the natural log of x. I 
cleaned him up first. I did done no calculus at all. This is nothing but algebra. Does that make sense? Now, take the derivative. Taking my derivative, you got to figure out, pause, hesitate, and ask yourself what rule. Let's read the problem again after you clean them up. It's now 84x squared times the natural log of x. So I always put the constant with the first term. That's 84x squared times natural log of x. It's back to a product rule. Knowing your rules, product rule. Do the first times the second plus the first times the second. Do the first. Derivative of 84x squared. Well, 2 times 84 is 168. 168x. Derivative of 84x squared is 168x. Derivative of the first times the second, natural log of x. Plus the first, 84x squared times derivative of the second. Well, that makes it easy when you clean it up. What's derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x. And officially, this is my answer. And if you put this on our Hulk system, you've got it 100% correct. But I can't leave this kind of an answer like a multiple choice. Well, I'm going to have to clean it up. It just bothers me to leave it like this. But if you type it into your Hulk system, it's perfectly fine. But y prime would be equal to 168x natural log of x plus 84x squared divided times 1 over x. Pretty much x squared divided by x is x, because when you divide, you subtract your exponent. This is your cleaned up answer. Does that make sense? But again, if you don't want to clean it up and you type it in just like this, you'll get credit for it. Okay? But now, take a look at the next guy. If you've learned anything from the natural log section is clean him up. This problem here is f of x is equal to the natural log of 12x squared minus 20 close parentheses, raised to the fifth power, times 25x squared minus 2x. And you want to take rid of this thing. There's an easy way and a hard way. Which way you guys want to do it? You, you should do it the easy way, but let me show you something, mother. I'm looking at, you know, 80-some people in this classroom, and I uh, can let you know right now about 70 of you people want to do it the hard way because you're just hard-headed. So let's talk to the hard-headed people because I want to show you what the answer is going to look like when you do it the hard way, and then I'm going to show you the easy way. Here's the hard way. You just jump in both feet and just start taking root. Because you don't think John's going to melt down. Okay. You should clean them up first. But let's assume unless you didn't. You just want to take a derivative because you're just excited about calculus. So take a derivative. This is the natural log of a function. Right? And I'm going to put it up here. Hard way. Not the way to do it. Okay. The hard way here. Derivative of the natural log of a function is going to be 1 over the function times derivative of the function. This is 1 over the function. 12x squared minus 20 raised to the fifth times 25x squared minus 2x. 1 over the function. All it is, 1 over, just copy the function, times the derivative of the function. Well, what rule are you going to take derivative of? What rule will you use to take derivative of 12x squared minus 20 to the fifth times 25x squared minus 2x? With well, that times in the middle, it's a product rule. Do the first times the second plus the first times the second. Do the first guy is, you've got to use the chain rule. 5 pops out front, the inside, 12x squared minus 20 stays the same, raised to the 4. Time through the inside, derivative of 12x squared is a 24x, derivative of uh, 20 is 0. So there's derivative the first, times the second, 25x squared minus 2x, plus the first, which you just recopy, 12x squared minus 20, raised to the fifth, times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of 25x squared minus 2x? Well, the derivative of 25x squared is what? 50x minus the derivative of 2x is 2. There's my answer. Fills up the whole screen. Okay? Does that make sense? Odd way of doing it. You'll get the right answer. Now go look and enjoy yourself and uh, type this thing in. Plus the fact that this is not how I'm going to have a multiple choice kind of answer. This thing's just too messy. You're going to have to clean it up big time. So... talk about the easy way. I wanted to show you hard way versus easy way. The easy way is John's fundamental theorem of calculus. Clean it up first. You're taking the natural log of something huge that's being multiplied and part of it's given raised to a power. You've got those beautiful log properties. So easy way is this. Before you take a this is still the original function. Clean them up. 
This is multiplying. It's the natural log of 12x squared minus 20 raised to the fifth times 25x squared minus 2x times, according to log properties, multiplication turns into what? Addition. It'll be the natural log of 12x squared minus 20 to the fifth plus, and multiplication turns into addition, the natural log of 25x squared minus 2x. I'm not done cleaning it up yet. According to log properties, when I'm taking the natural log of something to a power, where do powers get to go? In front of the log. So this keeps going here, so f of x, still the same function, it's going to be that 5 pops out front. 5 natural log of 12x squared minus 20 plus the natural log of 25x squared minus 2x. You look at all that going, well, but you haven't done any calculus. This is all algebra. Now, do the big stuff. Take the calculus. Take the derivative. So f prime of x would be equal to 5 is a constant. Leave it alone. What's the derivative of natural log of a function? You still got to know that rule. The derivative of natural log of a function is 1 over the function times the derivative of the function. So the derivative of natural log of 12x squared minus 20 is going to be 1 over 12x squared minus 20. Quote, times the derivative of the inside, chain rule. 1 over the function times the derivative of the function. The derivative of 12x squared minus 20 is 1 over 4x. Plus, I've got another term here, the natural log of uh, 25x squared minus 2x. The derivative of that's going to be, the derivative of natural log of the function is going to be 1 over the function, 1 over 25x squared minus 2x times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of 25x squared is going to be what? 50x minus the derivative of 2x is 2. And I'm done. Does that make sense? Well, you can clean them up, but cleaning them up at the end, look at this thing. I'm going to make you guys have to clean this thing up. You'll be there an hour trying to clean this thing up. Cleaning up this guy, put your comps together. What's 5 times 24? 5 times 24 is 120. So this would be, the derivative would be equal to 120x, just putting that in the numerator, divided by 12x squared minus 20, plus, putting this in the numerator, 50x minus 2 over 25x squared minus 2x. There's my answer. And honestly, once you take this term and distribute him and knock out a bunch of stuff and pull it out and clean it up, <laughs> you'll get the same answer. But this one looks a lot neater and a lot nicer, and it took a lot less work as long as you cleaned it up first. That's the trick with it, especially with logarithms, but all calculus for that matter. Does that make sense? So, again, your choice, which way you want to do it, easy way or hard way. You want to take this class again or not? Basically, that's your question. Your question. Clean it up is the key to all calculus. Think about it. How, many, how much algebra did you guys have before you even stepped foot in your first calculus class? You had algebra 1A or some other back in the 8th grade or something like that. Uh, you had algebra in 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, and some of you guys even had 11. Four years of algebra before you actually... The reason for that is it's so important in, in, in your calculus on cleaning up these forms so you can actually apply this stuff that you need, just derivatives, those rates of change that we're actually so... Im so important to us that we're doing. Take a look at this next guy. This guy is y equals 2x squared divided by the natural log of x to the fifth. Now, I know, granted, natural log of a fraction turns into, you know, a division turns into subtraction, but that's not what we got here. The natural log of, it's not of a fraction, the natural log term is completely in the denominator. But, you are taking the natural log of x to the fifth. Where do powers get to go? In front of the log. So go ahead and clean him up. So this is y equals 2x squared divided by 5 natural log of x. Power in terms of logs get to go in front of the logs. That's your classic property number three in log properties. Now, this is cleaned up. No problems at all. Take care of now. Well, what do you see? It's 2x squared divided by... 5 times natural log of x. What rule are you going to use? Quotient rule. Quotient rule. Drew the top, times the bottom, minus the top, times drew the bottom, all over the bottom square. you got to know your rule. Drew the top. What's drew of 2x squared? Drew the top is 4x. Times the bottom, just recopy it. 
times 5 times natural log of x. Here's the top times the bottom minus the top, which is 2x squared, times here's the bottom. 5 is a constant. Leave it alone. Constants hold over. Just multiply 5 times. What's true of natural log of x? Pure memorization. 1 over x. All over the bottom, 5 natural log of x squared. And this is fine for an answer. If I tell you, don't clean it up. You remember put parentheses running your numerator thing here, but I am going to clean this up to make it look like a multiple choice kind of answer I would put. What is, uh, put your, multiply your constants. 4 times 5 is what? 20x times natural log of x minus, here we go, 2 times 5 is 10. But what is x squared divided by x times 1 over x? What's x squared divided by x? Just x. Right? When you divide, you subtract your exponent. All over, and I can square the bottom. If you want to, you can leave it like this, or you can just square the bottom. 5 squared is how much? 25, and it would be parentheses, the natural log of x squared. And you have to type like that. And when you type it in on the Hawk system, you got to put parentheses around the numerator and parentheses around the denominator, but you'll get it. Does that make sense? Don't lose you guys anywhere. Well, they can throw word problems at you. Here we go. A company has determined that the profit from a sale of X chairs is given by, well, that was awfully nice of them. They gave me the profit equation. P of X is equal to 58X plus the natural log of 5X to the fourth plus $17. X is the number of chairs and P is profit. Find the marginal profit function. You guys have been programmed personally by me. When you hear the word marginal, what are you going to do? Take the derivative. Marginal profit, I want the derivative, the profit equation. So my marginal profit is the P prime of X equation. Well, here we go. Looking at this guy, there's not much I can clean up because that plus in there, you don't have natural log of something to a power. Just the first term has a power, so you can't, and remember, you can't distribute logs or anything like that. So this is the best I can do. So just jump in with both feet and take rid of it. Well, what's true of 58x? 58. Plus, what's true of natural log of 5x to the fourth plus 17? Well, true of natural log of x is 1 over x. True of natural log of a function is 1 over the function, chain rule, time to the inside. So the derivative of natural log of 5x to the fourth plus 17 is going to be 1 over 5x to the fourth plus 17 times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of 5x to the fourth is going to be 20x cubed plus derivative of 17 is zero. So there's my answer. And if I was going to type this thing in, just to make them look good, so p prime of x would be 58 plus 20x cubed over 5x to the fourth plus 17. There's my cleaned up version of my answer, just putting my fraction together in one big fraction. Because my derivative of the inside literally goes into the numerator. Okay. Look at this next guy. Find, oh, here comes some famous last words you've seen before. Find the absolute extrema for the function f of x equals the natural log of 9x squared minus 7x minus 10 on the interval between, oh, lovely, 11.6 and 13.4. Write your answer as an ordered pair rounded to two decimal places. All right, remember to find the absolute maxes and absolute mins. You first find your critical point, a critical value, and then you make it a critical point and you compare it to your endpoints. And the one with the biggest y coordinate is the absolute max, the one with the smallest y coordinate is the absolute min. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta find my critical values. We've all been programmed on that. I gotta take root, set equal to zero and solve. So Start with that prime of x. Now, this guy is pretty much as cleaned up as this ever going to get. It's natural log of 9x squared minus 7x minus 10. And since you can't distribute a natural log, you have to leave it like it is. So we're taking derivative of natural log of a function. So the derivative of that is going to be 1 over the function, 9x squared minus 7x minus 10, times through the inside, which is 18x minus 7. So it makes sense. 1 over the function, times through the function. And we're going to set it equal to zero, and we're going to solve. I'm going to clean this up. This is going to give me 18x minus 7 divided by 
9x squared minus 7x minus 10. Now, we're going to set that equal to 0, and we're going to solve. How do you solve a fraction equal to 0? What's your first move? Always. Multiply by your denominator. When you're solving equations, you want to get rid of your denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this 9x squared minus 7x minus 10. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Uh, multiply by 9x squared minus 7x minus 10. And this is going to give me this denominator completely cancels there. And you're left with 18x minus 7 is equal to 0 times anybody is what? 0. When you're setting a fraction equal to 0, you multiply by the denominator, and it basically ends up the numerator equals 0. Don't solve for the numerator. Solving for x, I would add 7. I get 18x equals 7. I'm going to divide by 18 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 7 18 And just to let you guys know what 7 18 is, here's the old calculator. 7 divided by 18 is 0.38889, whatever. But here's the deal. You've got to remember this. We're trying to figure out absolute maxes and mins. And you've got to compare. This is your critical value. Does that make sense? The CV, the critical value of this guy. However, the critical value has got to be inside your interval. What was my interval? This is 0 0.3889. The interval that I was given was what, between 11.6 and 13.4. Does that make sense? Your critical value of x being equal to 0.3889 is this is an element with a slash to it. It's not inside this interval. Does that make sense? So you have, since the critical value is not inside the interval, you actually have no critical values for this problem. You had one, but it's not inside the interval, so you can discard it. You only care about numbers between 11.6 and 13.4. So since you have no critical values, you'll have no critical points, but you do have some endpoints. Your endpoints are 11.6 and 13.4. And you've got to figure out their y coordinates. How do you figure out the y coordinates? What are you going to do? Plug it into the original equation. Anytime you need a y coordinate, you've got to double check and plug it into the original equation. The original equation is way up here. It's the natural log of parentheses 9 times parentheses, my x is 11.6. 11.6, close parentheses, squared, minus 7 times 11.6, minus 10, close parentheses. So I took the natural log of me plugging in 11.6 um, into all the x's here, and I end up getting 7.02, 7.02, Nine four one. There it is, and I'll go back and give me the correct decimal places. But that's good enough there. And then I'm going to take it and plug in thirteen point four. So I'm going to recall this thing back down, second entry, and replace all my x's with thirteen point four. And end up getting seven point three two one three four seven. Right off the calculator. Now, how many decimals do they want me to round this mess off to? Two decimal places. So my answer is going to be 11.6 comma, two decimal places, 7.02 and 13.4 comma, 7.32. Rounding it to two decimal places. But last thing you got to do, you've got to identify absolute extremum. Who's the absolute max and who's the absolute min? Which one's which? Look at the y coordinates. Which one has the biggest y coordinate? Between 7.02 and 7.32, it's 7.32. So this guy is the absolute max value. Does that make sense? And this guy is going to be your absolute min value. And we did not have any critical points to compare to. So th these are my guys. This is your absolute max. This is your absolute min. This is my answer. 
Does that make sense? Questions? Take a look at this next guy. It says this. Aphids are discovered in a banana orchard. The Department of Agriculture has determined that the population of aphids T hours after the orchard has been sprayed is approximately equal to, and we got an equation here. N of T is equal to 1800 minus 4T times the natural log of 0.13T minus T, where zero is less than or equal to T, which is less than or equal to 100. Okay? What is the maximum number of aphids in the banana orchard? Round your uh, answer to the nearest whole number. Okay? So it didn't ask you when it occurred. It asked you what is the maximum number. Okay? The maximum number is basically going to be your Y coordinate, but you're trying to maximize, in this case, and anytime you maximize or minimize, how do you do that? You take derivative, you set it equal to zero, and you solve. And you compare it to your endpoints. Does that make sense? So, this case, this being the case here, I'm going to look for my critical points here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my derivative. N prime of T. What's the derivative of 1800? Zero, because there's no constant. Minus, and watch what I do here, it's minus parentheses. Very important, because I want to focus this function is 4T times the natural log of 0.13T. Does that make sense? And that times in the middle means I'm going to use the product rule. But that minus is going to distribute later. So hold that minus out. This is 4t times the natural log of 0.13t. I'm going to use the product rule. Drew the first. What's true to 4t? 4 times the second. Natural log of 0.13t plus the first, 4t, times the derivative of the second. What's true of natural log of 0.13t? Well, anything other than a single variable, the derivative of natural log of a function is 1 over the function times derivative of the function. So the derivative of natural log of 0.13t is going to be 1 over 0.13t times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of 0.13t? What's the derivative of 0.13t? 0.13. Keep going, so, and then close your parentheses there. Minus, what's the derivative of t with respect to t would be 1. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to clean this guy up. And you'll notice lots of cleaning up going on here. This 1 over 0.13t times 0.13, the 0.13s actually cancel. Better than that, what else cancels? What's t divided by t? 1, 1 actually cancels. Okay? So you're left with n prime of t is equal to, this would be um, negative parentheses, or natural log of 0.13t plus, well, I all this counts, you're still left with a 4, plus parentheses, minus 1. So far, so good. Distribute the negative. So, n prime of t would be equal to negative 4 times natural log of 0.13t minus 4 minus 1. We're cleaning it up. This m prime of t is going to be equal to negative 4 natural log of 0.13t minus 5. Minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5. But wait, I want to, in this case, uh, maximize this thing. How do you maximize or minimize anything? What do you do? Take derivative, which we just got. We cleaned them up. Set it equal to your favorite number, 0, and solve. How would you solve for t here? Well, your t is embedded inside your natural log. You've got to get the natural log by himself. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. That gives me negative 4 natural log of 0.13t equals 5. Get the natural log by himself. I've got a negative 4 in front of my natural log. We multiply. What gets rid of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. That gives me the natural log of 0.13t equals negative 5 fourths. Now, keep going. What gets rid of a natural log? Here comes back to our properties here. What gets rid of a natural log? What is it? E. By raising E to both sides. Know your log properties from high school. 
raising e to both sides. e raised to the natural log equals e to the negative uh, 5 fourths. And the e and the natural log cancel. So I'm kind of running it this way here. That gives me 0.13t is equal to e raised to the negative 5 fourths. You with me? What's your last move to solve for t? Divide by 0.13. You're left with t is equal to e to the negative 5 fourths divided by 0 0.13. That's great, but this is a word problem, and that's not the answer. This is the time, if you want to convert it to decimals, knock yourself out. This is the time, let's see here, there'll be e raised to the negative 5 fourths divided by 0.13. Being on the old calculator there, 2.203888, this is probably in what, hours? Yes, 2.2 hours after you spray is uh, when you're going to have the maximum number of aphids before they, uh, the thing really starts to kill them off and stuff. Does that make sense? But the question, this is the time. What's the question to the problem? The question is, what is the maximum number of aphids? So they didn't want time and hours. They wanted number of aphids. So what am I going to do? Take this guy and do what with it? Plug him back into the original equation. So this n of e to the uh, negative 5 over 4 divided by 0 0.13 is going to be equal to, and I'm going to plug it back into this original function right here. I'm just going to do it on my calculator here. So this will be 1,800 minus... 4 times your t, which is your e to the negative 5 fourths divided by 0.13 times the natural log of parentheses 0.13. I don't need a parenthesis there, I got one. 0.13 times e raised to the negative 5 fourths divided by. 0.13, which ends up filling off that 0.13, but I'm just plugging it in. Close parentheses there, and then minus one more t of e to the negative 5 divided by 4 divided by 0.13, and I end up getting boom. What's my answer? 18,000, what, 1,808.8155322 aphids. But now answer the question. Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So what's my answer? 18, oh what? 18.8 rounds it to 9. I got 1,809 aphids is the actual answer. Does that make sense? Questions? All right. Section 5.4 works with the derivative of the e to the x function. And I remind you guys, once again, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. However, you got the chain rule version of that. The derivative of e to a function is e to the function times the derivative of the function. So this is what section 5.4 formulas you need to know. And of course, they're going to put in a product rule, chain rule, quotient rule fashion for you guys. This is the rules for section 5.4. So, here we go. In terms of your learn, basically your two rules. If f of x is equal to e to the x, what's the root of that? It's the easiest rule in the world. What is it? E to the x. However, if f of x is equal to e to a function, e to the g of x, then f prime of x would be equal to e to the g of x, e to the function, times the root of the x function. So, Look at what they asked for in your video example here. Again, please walk, watch the Hawks TV, uh, www.hawkstv.com, and go to that section 5.4. They got a similar problem, different from this one, so I'm making the video for this one here. So here we go. Find the first and second derivative of g of x is equal to, let's write this down, g of x is equal to 2x cubed times e to the 2x plus 1. Stop, pause, hesitate, and ask yourself, what rule am I going to use? 2x cubed 
times e to the 2x plus 1. That times in the middle implies it's a product rule. Product rule. Drew the first times the second plus the first times the second. Drew the first guy. Drew the first 2x cubed is what? 3 times 2 is 6x squared. Drew the first times the second. e to the 2x plus 1 plus the first 2x cubed times to drew the second. Now, this is derivative of e to a function. Derivative of e to the function is e to the function e to the 2x plus 1 times derivative of the exponent, which is, let's draw 2x plus 1, 2. But before you, because they did ask for a second derivative, before you find the second derivative, you should clean up your first derivative. So g prime of x would be equal to 6x squared times e to the 2x plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4. That would be 4x cubed times e to the 2x plus 1. Does that make sense? This is your first derivative. Now, if you want to, you can factor out that e thing here. And you can also call him, because they do have this in common, you can factor out some more stuff. But I'm just going to factor out the e to the 2x plus 1 part. And that's going to leave me with 6x squared plus 4x cubed. And the reason why I did that is because they asked me to take a second derivative. So here's your answer for the first one. And you can type in this one into halt or this one. It won't matter. But there's a part B to this thing. You've got to find the second derivative. Now, if I use this form, I would have to use the product rule on this guy plus the product rule on this guy. That's fine, but that's twice as much work. Since I factored out, since they had the e to the 2x plus 1 in common, I went ahead and pulled it out. And it just made one big product rule. Does that make sense? This is why I did it. So I can use the derivative of this guy. Product rule. Through the first sum of the second plus the first sum of the second. Here's my first guy. Here's my second guy. So derivative of the first. Derivative of e to a function is e to the function e to the 2x plus 1 times derivative of the exponent, which is 2. That's the derivative of the first times the second. 6x squared plus 4x cubed plus the first e to the 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the second. Derivative of 6x squared plus 4x cubed, well, derivative of 6x squared is uh, 12x, plus derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared. Does that make sense? And there is my second derivative. You can clean them up if you want to. You can distribute the two. You can factor and combine a bunch of like terms if you want to. Um, that's up to you guys. There's lots of different ways you can have this answer looking. We'll take it either one. The only thing I would do to this guy, I would leave it e to the 2x plus 1 times, and I would distribute the 2 throughout. That would make it 12x squared plus, I uh, see, so 2 times eight, uh, two times 4 is 8x cubed plus e to the 2x plus 1 times 12x plus 12x squared. And then from that, if you really wanted to clean them up, you can factor out e to the 2x plus 1. That leaves you with 12x squared plus 8x cubed plus, that's been factored out, 12x plus 12x squared. And then last but not least, to combine your like terms, this would be e to the 2x plus 1 times, let's see here, you got a 12x. You've got a 12x squared plus a 12x squared. How much you got? What's 12x squared plus 12x squared? 24x squared plus the 8x cubed. And that's actually the cleaned up version of your answer right there. A lot of algebra still to be had here. Does that make sense? But if you type it in on Hawks, you could have typed it in here. You could have typed it in just like this if you wanted to. You could have typed it in just like this if you really wanted to. The computer's going to take it any way you want to. Just make sure you put parentheses in the right spot. Okay? So let's take a look at this guy. Do some more derivatives. Remember, derivative e to the x is e to the x. Derivative e to a function is e to the function times derivative of the exponent. So g of x is equal to negative 2 times e to the 2x cubed plus 5. So g prime of x is going to be equal to, when negative 2 is a constant, it holds over. This is e to a function. Derivative e to a function is e to the function e to the 2x cubed plus 5 times the derivative of the exponent. What's the derivative of that 2x cubed plus 5? What's the derivative of that guy? 6x squared and the derivative of 5 is 0. And again, to clean it up, to make it a little nicer, you can put your comps together. 
Negative 2 times 6 is uh, negative 12 x squared. Just putting those two terms together times this e to the 2x cubed plus 5. There's a cleaned up version of your answer. But if you type in this into Hulk, you're good to go. Take a look at the next guy. B. F of x is equal to e to the x times the natural log of x plus 4. What rule are you going to use to take rid of e to the x times the natural log of x plus 4? Product rule. Do the first times the second plus the first times the second. Labeling is everything. So f prime of x is equal to do the first. Don't hurt yourselves. Let's do the v of the x. Exactly. V to the x. Do the first times the second natural log of x plus 4 plus the first e to the x times the second. What's the derivative of, what is the derivative of the natural log of x plus 4? Anything other than x, you've got the natural log of a function. Back to the last section. If you have natural log of a function, it's 1 over the function times the function. That will be 1 over x plus 4 times the derivative inside. But the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of 4 is 0, so pretty much times 1. And there's your answer. And so if you want this thing to look good in terms of a multiple choice answer, so the e to the x times the natural log of x plus 4 plus, multiplying all your stuff in the numerator, e to the x divided by x plus 4. There's your answer. Does that make sense? And then let's do one more, and then we'll call it a day here. f of x is equal to e to the, uh, e to the x divided by e to the x minus 1. Okay? Well, clearly, it is a quotient. So we're going to use the quotient rule. Drew the top times the bottom, minus the top times the bottom, all over the bottom squared. Drew the top. Drew the x is? E to the x. Drew the top times the bottom, e to the x minus 1. Minus the top, e to the x times drew to the bottom. What's drew to e to the x minus 1? Well, drew to e to the x is? e to the x drew to minus 1 is? 0. That cuts that off. All over the bottom, e to the x minus 1 squared. Now, I'm going to clean this guy up. And I'm going to distribute because I want to show you guys something wrong. What is e to the x times e to the x? When you multiply, what do you do with the exponents? You add them. e to the x times e to the x is actually e to the 2x. So this is e to the 2x minus e to the x times 1 is e to the x minus e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x all over e to the x minus 1 squared. And remember, addition, subtraction, you can't distribute powers. But one last thing, what's e to the 2x minus e to the 2x? They cancel. Zero. This guy cancels that guy. And you're left with your derivative being equal to negative e to the x divided by e to the x minus 1 squared. That is my first derivative. We will pick up with taking more derivatives of these e to the x and then applying them in some interesting word problems and application stuff. So we'll do this next time as we're uh, cruising right through Chapter uh, 5. So uh, get ready and start studying. So see you guys uh, on Wednesday. Bye.